Link engaged. Visit us at teamspeak.com. Here we are on Zalnaga Caverns. Bonnie in the top right, bringing it back to 1-1 is uh, the blue Terran player, FXO Moonen, his opponent in the bottom left of this one versus one map, the Protoss player, who looked like he had a solid timing in game one and uh, a solid timing that fell apart in game number two. He's Huang Xin. Versus Moonen. Hmm. I think um, it's going to be very interesting what's going to be happening in this game. Uh, because we saw two very different styles in both plays uh, games so far, and right. it's but you have like a um, kind of like a continui continuity in it. Because Wangsen has a lot of strong timings. Uh, the first right. game, obviously, it worked out, and his game seems very structured and relies on that timing. So basically, what I think Moonen needs to do is he needs to prevent the timings from becoming true, and then he's gonna be in control of the game. Yeah, I completely agree. He needs to do two things, which is A, he needs to identify what build is coming. So he needs to do whatever he can, maybe sacrifice a mule to drop a lucky scan in there and find out what timing attack is coming. And then, you know, if I'm him, I'm going to play a little bit overly defensive because I know if I defend that timing, I saw my opponent completely fall apart in game number two. And that's the situation I want to be in yet again. But then, of course, we always have thinking that he thinks that I think. So anything <laughs> could happen. 10th level gaming here. Absolutely, it's open. poker. It's poker. I want to see <laughs> way more poker strategies in StarCraft, Wait. to be honest. He's, he's just going three Nexus, no scout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he cancels all of them and goes eight Wolf games. <laughs> <laughs> TLO go. You heard it here first. <laughs> Try it out. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm trying it out right now. But uh, we see the gas up here for uh, Wang Xing and the, the refinery also up for FXO Moonin. So a little bit uh, common builds here. I believe we're going to see a similar build to what we saw in game number two with the Tech Lab add-on. You know, he can follow that up with the Marauder, but I'm going to imagine he's going to follow the Reaper. It worked for him well in game number two. And look at this probe over here. That's making me a little bit nervous. Nah, it seems like just scooting around, scouting what's going on. Um, he's actually going to get his okay. probe in there, which is... Uh, a little bit bad by Moonen because you can actually micro your marine to kill it before it gets in. Getting valuable scouting, he sees a refinery, 100 gas mined, no tech lab yet, which means right. the factory is going to be coming up. Filling that probe and dropping the factory as you correctly identified. We've got the cybernetics core out for uh, Huang Xin. He's going to follow up by chrono boosting out that stalker and uh, Probably going to wait for that stalker. Well, not probably. He's definitely going to wait for that stalker before he decides to follow up his build order here. Absolutely. And we do have a second guess for Moon. And, and what does that mean, Shil? I don't know. Why don't you tell me, Tilo? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, it's going to be Banshees. I would Banshees. Banshee. It's yes. pretty obvious. Or it could be some funky Raven build, I guess. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I like it a lot, what he's doing, to be honest, because... Um, Punson did see no tech lab and uh, 100 gas mines, so it is kind of obvious for something like that to be happening. That could also be a Hellion aggression. I guess Moonen is completely confusing me right now. I don't know what build he's going for. Well, the other thing is Moonen actually knows that Huang Xing dropped two assimilators, so he should be aware that uh, some sort of higher tech, you know, probably favoring uh, a robotics off one base is coming. And if he's if he knows that, going for Cloak Banshee is a little bit of a of a misstep. We can see the reactor finishing on the barracks. He's now got the factory with the tech lab coming, gonna swap those out. So let's see how uh, how far he takes his cloak banshees. Absolutely, and as I was saying, Wang Sin is pretty much prepared for it. He, he right. didn't see early tech labs, so he's just gonna go for the robotics. Most Koreans are pretty solid like that, not gonna be assuming, oh well, maybe he's going cloak banshees, <laughs> but maybe not, so not taking any big just risks worry, there. Bro. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I'm just gonna ignore it and pretend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely don't doesn't seem like a, uh, a Korean style. As Moonin pushes out here, controlling that eastern tower, so he gets a little bit of a vision. He's got the bunker up, a few Hellions out of the factory. Factory also going to follow up with a tech lab. Uh, Cloak was uh, started first, so that is now about 50% complete. First Banshee out, and you know, even if your Banshee, your Cloak Banshee gets quote unquote hard countered. By an observer, you still can get in there, get the observer out of position, and do a lot of damage if you get lucky. Yeah, but I think the first observer is arriving too early, to be honest. 
it kind of works if, if you basically uh, reach the Terran base, then the Observer scouts Cloak and then it's too late because you already have Cloak Benji in your base. But now he easily has enough time to build a second Observer. Yeah, we can see he's actually Chrono boosting that out and rallying it back to his main mineral line and actually warping Stalkers into his main mineral line. So this is not the greatest of positions for Moonen to be here uh, in the mid game of game number three. Yeah, and he seems to be going more or less... No, okay, now he proves me wrong. I want to say he goes more or less one base um, because mm -hmm. um, of the Marines and the tanks and the benches, but he's actually throwing down a command center now, which is uh, really nice. I mean, he's not so far behind, uh, so Nexus isn't even finished yet. So even though Protoss is going to be a little bit of an edge, um, he forces him into an extremely defensive position. And the Banshee just missing the sentries. He could have picked off three or four sentries there. Now Cloaking going to work on some probes. He's going to get two of them before he's forced to run away. And look at this flanking observer with sentries. He's going to fly in the way. The sentries are going to pull down that Banshee ever so quickly. And not a lot of value gotten out of that Banshee. We can see Huangxin is going to be very comfortable with his expansion completed now. He's got a few more gateways finishing. He can tech directly towards Colossi if he wants. But looks like he's just going to make one more immortal and uh, continue standard production. And it, the person I'm worried about is Moonen. It looks like he's going to follow up with two more barracks. His expansion is not even completed yet, whereas Huangxin is fully mining off his natural. Absolutely, and I wouldn't be surprised to see, see a three immortal timing attack. Huangxin needs to be very careful to uh, keep some stalkers behind. He doesn't even have to have stalkers in his main and his natural, just keep like three stalkers at one base. Because honestly, a, a new Banshee is not going to be doing so much damage. Even spots the new Banshee, so he's very well aware. There's still one on the map, but I don't think he's going to be um, forced into a completely defensive position by that. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, he's actually got two observers, so extremely safe here. He's got one at his natural, one still at his main base, so even flanking Banshee is not going to be able to do that much damage against Huangxin. We can see him pushing out with Stalkers, just denying that, that uh, second Banshee. Three Immortals are out, no more production out of the Robotics Facility, and no uh, follow-up, no Robotics Bay yet. So let's see, he's not uh, really being active with his army. As we've seen thus far, he really loves the timing, so that's what I would have expected to see, but it's going to have to come pretty soon here. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends if he's going to be too scared uh, tanking into the siege line. It's only three siege tanks, but uh, right. even so, a few siege tanks. Combined with bunkers can do so sick damage against mm -hmm. an early game army, as long as uh, Pro uh, Terran is smart enough not to focus fire immortals, which tanks actually, I think, do automatically. I'm not sure. To losing one stalker there to uh, the Banshee Hellion tag team at the Western uh, Zanaga. Moonin pulling down his destructible rocks. He's not doing anything with those units anyway, so might as well clear out that gold. And here goes the army for Huangxin. This is what I was expecting to see. He's pushing forward with all his units. And uh, yeah, this, this looks like this is going to be his timing to attack. Absolutely, and this is a good timing indeed. Um, only three tanks are there. Stimpak is not even completed yet. So his bio army is not going to be very powerful at all. Looks like he's going to test the durability on that first bunker. Now warping in his proxy pylon. He's only got four sentries, but a lot of energy on them. So he's going to probably have... Uh, about four force fields between all of them. Now putting up Guardian Shield, moving forward, and this is it. Trying to move in. It's gonna have to... Oh, SCV's being pulled, putting up a few force fields, trying to isolate the retreat. But those tanks are doing sick damage. The Immortals jammed in the back, trying to move forward. Gonna take out one tank, one bunker taken out. But I believe Moonin may be able to hold this. Isolating a second round, trying to take out the tank. He's gonna move forward with the Immortals. All three Immortals still alive, taking out the second tank. Warping in more Zealots and more... Or excuse me, more Stalkers. He's made his way to the third bunker, the SCVs, trying to repair that. He takes out the tank. It looks like he's going to completely break this tank line. Medevac's coming out, but they're not going to be able to do too much as Huangjin has broken the line, and he's now got complete access to the natural of Moon. Absolutely, and once again, Huangjin shows beautiful timing, not being missing anything, knowing when the are going to be out, and knowing that he just has to play safe and hits the exact right timing to take out Terran. I don't think this game is absolutely over. Uh, Moonin could hold his ramp for a little bit. There's there's no real high damage dealing units here, like the uh, Sentry Zell combo, but it looks like Moonin focusing to run in and take down that Immortal. I'm not sure I like that decision as the units are now just crashing into the main base of Moonin and he's forced to pull his main SCVs, and that is never a good sign. No, absolutely not, especially after 19, 14 minutes. <laughs> that is not a right. good sign. And 
stalkers aren't the base now, they're gonna be picking off any unit being reproduced and there's just no coming back from this point. And you know, when you commit to a build like Cloak, Cloak Banshees and it just doesn't do enough damage, that just makes the timing attack of your opponent that much stronger because you sacrifice, you know, some, some production for tech which didn't pay off. And that's what we're seeing here, even though it was a beautiful siege line by Moonin, just not enough, not enough units out there to defend. And there's the GG by Moonin. We have our first finalist in this TL Open 16, and that is going to be Huang Xin from Team MVP. Beautiful. Once again, a Korean being dominating. Uh, it's actually, it should be an alarm sign to us and a waking up call. Cannot let that happen over and over again, can we? Taylor, what, what time is it in Korea? Let me open up TL time. Um, Cause I feel like it's very it's 7 a.m. 7 a.m. So this Maybe guy's 8. Pro probably, yeah, it's 7.15. So this guy probably started playing around maybe 2 a.m. Yeah. Hmm. And he's in the finals. Pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I wonder if he's been sleeping at all or just staying up. Like, it could be that he's been sleeping because he knows he wants to play it. Yeah, maybe he did a reverse ghost. He switched his time over to Western time. Yeah, maybe that we're going to see that happen more and more if we don't stop Koreans from winning tournaments now because they're <laughs> going to be like, oh, nice, easy money. Let's just all sleep European time or American. You know, and we have heard out of the Koreans that outside of the GSL, there's not... I'm not even going to say there's not a lot. There's almost no other tournaments outside of the GSL for them yeah. to participate in. So... And now they tasted blood and now it's going to be <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> they tasted blood and tasted money and that's a yeah. dangerous combination. Absolutely, so we should, should all be aware of that we can have to be preparing better and play more and be, yeah, stronger players. That wish is I could true. Be, wish I could be practicing seriously. Yeah, this, should, this is a wake up call to you, TLO. We've activated your, your TLO alarm. Yeah, but now I want to start playing and I'm going to destroy my body <laughs> for real. So. It's like the most dangerous thing ever. <laughs> TLO, we need you. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's so frustrating to, frustrating to watch replays from me right now because I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, it's, it's like putting a heroin needle next to the skin <laughs> of an addict and just saying, try it, come on, it's not gonna hurt, on, just one just more time. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Oh man. <laughs> I'm We've dying got, here. Uh... <laughs> We've got our Protoss finalist, uh, let's look over to the lower side of the bracket where we've got uh, kind of the infamous Six Jacks Major, a.k.a. Ghosty Terran, a.k.a. He doesn't even know all his AKs, and I'm not even going to try to run through them, but uh, the Mexican Terran plays a Korean style, uh, very solid, uh, as you've said, and, you know, he made a bit of a splash in Brood War and now making a bit of a splash in SC2. He's going to be taking on uh, Inca, the Protoss player. I've been watching some of his games today with some of the other streamers, I believe, uh, Icy Cup, we're streaming a little bit, Rage Quit, I was watching that all morning. Both of these players showing uh, pretty strong results, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They they left a little bit to be desired, so either one of these moving into the finals against a strong timing of Huang Qin, uh, I believe they're going to have to step up their game just a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, that is definitely the underdog semifinals, yeah. I'd say. Both players not as strong as in the other semis, maybe? But obviously strong anyways because they made it to the semis and obviously Major is a known player and Inca. Right. I don't know so much about Inca actually. Um, he he was quite successful early on in Bida and a little bit after, but I haven't seen much from him lately to be honest. Well the thing about the TL Open is that uh, miracles do happen TLO and we've seen a lot of upsets in past TL Open so I would not be surprised if one of these players went into the finals and just uh, stomped Wang Xing out uh, three. Yeah, maybe he falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> not uncommon in uh, Korean PC bongs, so uh, no. definitely a possibility. That would be so funny if that would actually be happening. Like, suddenly <laughs> no music. APM Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I think that's about all the introduction we need. This is going to be yet again a TVP starting on Metalopolis. I've got replay number one loaded up, and TLO, if you're ready, sir, we're going to be jumping into uh, series number two. If you're ready, if you're ready, I sir. I am. I am He's ready. ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you He's don't in have shock. to wait for me. Disbelieve. <laughs> All right, I don't have to wait for TLO. So with that being said, we're going to jump into series number two right now. <laughs> 